Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zanata Consulting. Uh, my name is Tyler Colts, and in this video, we're going to be walking through how to filter and slice your data within Zoho CRM. Um, before I jump in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. Uh, and if you have any feedback or additional questions, please leave that in the comments section as we do try to read and respond to every single one of those on our weekly podcast, The CRM Zen Show. So without any further ado, let us jump right on into the walkthrough. So when we're working inside the CRM, there's kind of two different ways that you can go about filtering your data. Um, one of those ways is using a custom view, which is up here in the top left. And the other way is using kind of these quick filters here that are on the left-hand side of the page. Um, I normally recommend kind of primarily using custom views, and there's a few reasons for that. Um, and using these quick filters kind of as an additional layer on top of your custom views. So let's go ahead and kind of think through a view that we might want to create um, and then walk through the steps to create it. So looking here, we've got kind of a spread of deals, right? We've got the ones that are closed lost, some that are open kind of in proposal qualification, a couple that are closed one. Um, we're also seeing things around, you know, is this new business or existing? Um, we might look at who is the owner of this record, right? We have demo one and demo two. Um, you know, we can even look at things based on our closing date, right? So really anything that is a part of the record is pretty much going to be fair game for creating a custom view. So I'm going to start with one that's that's pretty commonly used. Um, let's imagine we wanted to create a view for our sales team where they could look at open deals, but only open deals that they are the owner of, right? Kind of a standard view that sales reps would want to use. So up here in the top left, I'm going to go ahead and click on create or new custom view. And from here, we get a lot of the different options that we can use to actually set this up. So first, I'm going to give it a name. I'll call it my open deals. Down here, we'll actually specify the criteria. So this is where most of the work actually happens with the custom views. So a few of these that we know we're gonna want are things like stage is open, right? This is actually pulling from our forecasting options on deal stages. Another way to do it would be to say like stage isn't closed one, closed lost or lost to competition, depending on like how many different closed one and closed lost you have, right? You can determine if you want to do it like this or um, set it up using the forecasting options. I'm just going to leave it like this because in this demo account, it's going to get us the exact same thing. And then here for looking at my open deals, the second part, right? Now we've got open deals with our stages. Now we need to solve for the my component of this. And this is something that Zoho does pretty well. If we grab our deal owner as a field, we say is, we can actually have it dynamically pull based on whoever is logged in. And that's a really powerful thing, right? You don't want to go through here and create John's open deals and Susie's open deals and Tyler's open deals all as separate views. It works a lot better if we let the system do a little bit of that thinking for us because it already knows who's logged in and it can make that determination and filter the data accordingly. Now, last but not least, as we're setting up a custom view, we will need to decide which columns are relevant for that view, right? And so these really just get into the specifics of what data you're tracking and the different types of data that your team might use to determine what they should do with a certain deal. I'm going to grab a couple of these that I know are generally helpful. Um, I kind of always like to have the contact name easily accessible when I look at a deal. Uh, we definitely want the amount. We want to use the stage. Closing date's always a good thing as well. And then last but not least, I'll pull in the deal type. Now, what you might notice is that on our original view for all deals, I had the owner field in it. In this case, because I'm already filtering based on the logged in user, 
I really don't need to include deal owner because we already know that whoever opens it up is the owner of all of those deals. And then down here at the bottom, there's one last little option. If you wanted a view to be public or only shared to specific users, you can set those up here via the share this with options. What I do like to do when I'm doing these views, especially if you have a larger sales team, is I like to lock the view. Really locking it just means that nobody with access is going to be able to adjust the criteria or adjust the columns that are visible. Because if one person adjusts this for themselves, like maybe they really like seeing the account name and they just drag that in and add it. Now everybody's going to see the account name, right? And so in a case where maybe your deals are named very similar to your accounts, most of your team might think, eh, I don't really care about having that value here. It's more just in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and save our view. And we'll see that we've got, you know, less data, right, than we did before. So our previous view here being all deals, right, it was including deal name, our stage, closing date, it included the account name, contact name, right? So we've kind of trimmed down the fields that we're showing. Um, you know, here we're not showing the deal owner in our view. Um, looks like I grabbed the wrong version of type. So we'll go ahead and jump back over to our new My Open Deals view, and we can edit that. So as you're going through here, right, you might find like, hey, there's a good opportunity if you're in your system, maybe just remove this field, right, if it's not being used. Um, so I'll jump back into our edit using that pencil in the top left. I'll get rid of deal type, and I'll just drag type into the mix. Now I can click Save, and we'll now have the proper value available in this view. Now, this isn't the only type of view that you might want to make. Um, if I'm a salesperson, honestly, like this is probably the main view that they're really going to care about, right? They want to be able to very easily find the stuff that is their responsibility that still needs to be worked. Um, but let's imagine that maybe you have a manager on the team who likes to be able to see, let's say, everything that was closed last week, right? Maybe they've got a Monday tradition. They just like to fly through each one of these deals and kind of see the timeline of it see what happened, whether we won it, whether we lost it, we just want to have a better understanding of why. So I'll create a new view and we'll call this close last week. Now, in this case, we kind of want the opposite of the stage that we had last time. So last time we were saying where the stage isn't any of our closed won or closed losts. Um, but in this case, right, we actually want to say where the stage is. So you always want to be careful with these. I mean, you can get pretty creative, right? Using things like contains, starts with, is empty and is not empty are actually very useful, right? If, especially if you're looking to do some data cleanup, right? Like show me all the deals where the industry is empty, right? And then kind of crack the whip and make sure that the team updates those. Now, the other thing that we'll need for this view, this closed last week, is we're going to actually reference the closing date of that deal. Right. And with dates, you have a pretty useful um, picker here. Right. So when we look at like stage is, we just says is, isn't, contains, doesn't contain, things like that. With any date field, when you're using them in these filters, you can have these little dynamic um, filter options. Right. So last week, you only need to set it once and it's always going to know what last week is. Um, it is going to base that off of your business days, right? Starts on Monday, starts on Sunday, right? So be aware of that. Um, but it's one of those things where you just need to set it up this one time, and then you'll always be able to um, use this view, and it's always going to show data from last week. Now here, thinking, you know, now I'm kind of in the manager perspective. Now I care about deal owner again. It might be the main thing that I care about here, because I want to know who's winning deals and who's losing them. Um, you know, maybe I'll drag my contact name in here and we'll put our type just to be consistent. I'll go ahead and share this with everyone and I'll lock this view. And so now as a manager, I can see, okay, last week is an auto demo, lost a deal and won a deal. So it looks like we lost some existing business and we won some new business. Um, so I guess all things held equal here. Uh, looks like we've netted out at zero for this week. Um, but so essentially, right, you can get creative with these and use them to create a variety of different kind of baseline views for a particular, um, you know, module of data. 
And of course, you can use these for accounts and for contacts and for leads as well. We highly recommend you do um, because when your team is having to dig through things like all deals, right? And again, this is just a demo account. So we've got 11, right? But you could imagine that, you know, in the Zanata, the, the real Zanata CRM, all deals would have hundreds of deals, right? And most of them would be either closed won or closed lost at that point, right? Because we've either won them or lost them. The further we go back in time, the higher a percentage we don't really need to think about anymore. We don't need to work them as a sales opportunity. So it's really important to use these um, views and set your team up in a way where they're not fighting against the system to get to the data that they need. Now, the last little thing I'll show on deals, just because a lot of people miss it, I'm actually going to zoom in for this, is the favorite button right here. I can actually star any of these views and it will keep them at the top for me. Um, I'm just showing that here because it is very, very gray and very hard to see, um, but is very useful, right? So now as a sales rep, I'm always going to have my open deals at the top of my list. I don't need to dig through it, right? Again, as you can imagine, as you get more creative and dive in, you're going to have a lot of different views. Um, so being able to instruct the team to favorite specific ones will just make their lives a lot easier. Now, I did promise here that I would talk about the other way of filtering, right? It is definitely kind of option two, where I oftentimes will use it in congruence with a different filter using my views. Um, but these quick filters on the left can be useful for a few specific reasons, right? And I'll show you one real quick here. So, Let's say I'm looking at all of my open deals, but I want to start my day by looking at just things that are new business, right? So here inside of my view, I can actually add kind of a second filter and say, only show me things that are new business, right? And if I wanted to keep that available, I could just save it. And then maybe I also want something like our existing business. Save as new. And so now I've got my two kind of sub filters here saved up at the top um, that I can always use to kind of further slice and dice my data. Now, that being said, something like this, you might be thinking, OK, well, you could just do this in your view, right? I could have a my open new business, my open existing business, and that would be totally fair game. Um, it really just depends on your team and how comfortable they are at using different components of the system, right? So some people end up, you know, some sales reps would rather have like 10 views up here and never touch these, whereas others might want to say, no, give me like two or three views and then all slice and dice the data more on a need be basis um, to get where I need to go. But there is one little element here that is unique for these filters, right? That you can't really get to with your custom views. And it's it's these options here under system defined fields where you start to find some value. So I'll kind of look through here, right? We can actually filter using system defined fields for things like touched records, right? So has the user or the system done anything to these records in the last two days? Right. Or maybe I want to see show me records that have not been touched at all in the last two days. A big one here um, that people find themselves using a lot are like activities and notes. Right. So up here, I'll open up a deal so I can kind of show you what I mean. Um, if I look at this King deal, it actually has an open task related to it, which we'll take a look at once it loads here. So this King deal has an open task to follow up on quote with a due date of next week. Um, whereas, you know, Truler does not, Chapman does not, Printing Dimensions does, right? And so you might see that some of these deals have some open tasks and things that need to be worked on, whereas some don't. And so one of the powerful things with the filters on the left that you just can't quite do with a custom view is actually filter to look at any um, activities that might exist um, connected to that given record, right? And so I can actually look at like anything where there is an activity due today or the next seven days, right? Or anything that doesn't have an open activity, 
right? So that's kind of a useful one. Maybe I want to come in here and see, you know, of all my deals, these three, I don't have a task for, and I probably should, right? Because I need to have something in the system to denote what my next step is going to be. Um, so oftentimes you might want to filter on something like that. Or, you know, I think in this case, all of our tasks are pretty far into the future. Um, but if any of these tasks were overdue, right, I can actually go ahead and apply filters there. In this case, none of these are overdue. They're pretty far into the future, so they don't need to be done right now. Um, but so we're actually able to filter quickly and easily based on these related actions, as well as just the kind of like field level data that shows up for our custom views. Um, the last kind of interesting one I'll show you here is you can actually filter based on emails that have been sent, right? So have I sent this deal an email within the last X number of days? Um, so these are kind of more of those tools that a sales rep might want to use regularly, right? Like show me my open deals and now show me ones where I have not sent an email in the last two days, right? And I think in this case, it's demo data, so it's going to be all of them. Um, but if I had been prospecting for some of these, they would remove themselves so that I can prioritize the records that I haven't really been working as much as some of the others. And again, any of these options here are savable, right? So I could come in here and say, you know, show me everything without an activity and then save this as a view for needs task. And now I can always just grab these and apply them super quickly and easily to whatever I'm looking at in the system. So I think with that, that should cover just about everything you need to at least get your hands dirty here with custom views and filters. Obviously, there's always deeper that you can go and there's always more that you can do. Um, but the trick is, you know, to use some of these core abilities, right? And again, kind of as a recap, this deal owner is logged in user is a big one. Um, being able to, again, kind of dynamically filter on dates looking at last week. Um, these are things that, you know, I've been setting up CRM systems for years and years now. I still use them all the time because it's these little things that make a big, big difference when you actually get your users into the system. And so with that, I do hope that this video was useful for you. Um, if you did find it so, uh, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Uh, that'll make sure that YouTube will show you future videos that we put out. And it does really help us out in the dark magic of their algorithm. Um, and then if you do have any feedback or questions, please leave those in the comment section below as we try to read and respond to each and every one of those on our weekly podcast, The CRM Zen Show. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.